HITECH manufactures a complete line of structural injection products. Today we'll be using our Injection Pro 6002C, our TX2 capping gel, and our HT500 structural injection epoxy. HITECH also supplies all the necessary accessories from the injection ports to the static mixers to all the adapters and valves necessary to complete this procedure. Here's a typical crack you'll find in a concrete structure. So we're gonna go ahead and show you what's necessary to make a, make a good structural repair here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and strip the surface. This is an important part of this procedure. We wanna be sure that our surface seal and our injection ports are gonna adhere well to the wall. Your safety is very important, so be sure to have your safety glasses, dust mask, and work gloves before grinding. So as you can see, this crack goes completely through the structure. So we're going to go ahead and, and strip the paint here as well. So we can go ahead and, and surface seal this and create a nice confined space for our injection epoxy. As you can see, we've now stripped the paint from around the crack. We're going to go ahead and use compressed air to blow the crack out, remove the dust and, and any loose debris. Now we'll go ahead and set our surface mounted epoxy ports. To do this, we'll need a nail that we'll use as a guide. We'll need our injection ports and we'll need a hot glue gun. As a standard, the ports are spaced roughly half the thickness of the wall. In this case, the wall is six inches thick, so we'll go ahead and space our ports out roughly three inches apart. Okay, so we're gonna take our nail, we'll insert it in the injection port. Using the hot glue, we'll apply a small amount to each of the feet of the injection port. Using the nail as a guide, we'll line it up with the crack and simply press the port on. I'd like to point out that in some areas where you, where you end up with these, these little islands and the crack branches off, uh, we went ahead and set the ports a little close here. We want to make sure that we're able to repair this section of the crack completely. Our injection ports are set. The next step is to go ahead and seal the surface of the crack and also to secure the injection ports in place. It's important here to be sure that this coverage is complete as any open spaces will allow the epoxy to leak out as pressure is applied to the injection port. Our TX2 capping gel is mixed at a one-to-one -one ratio. We'll simply take equal amounts We'll mix these together. When the product is mixed completely, it'll have a nice uniform gray color. There's many ways to apply the surface seal. We prefer to use a mixing stick. Again, it's very important that the surface is sealed well. The epoxy will travel the path of least resistance, so any pinholes or imperfections will allow the epoxy to run out when pressure is applied to the injection port. We're ready to move on to the injection. First thing we gotta do though is we gotta go ahead and purge the machine, make sure there's no, uh, no oils or any of the old cleaning materials left in the pump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put a little epoxy in the machine. A component in the A side, B component in the B side. Okay, once the epoxy's in the machine, we wanna go ahead and, and check it out, make sure we don't have any 
any air trapped in the base. And we do this by simply tilting the pump backwards. Tilting the pump forward. We'll go ahead and lock the trigger in place. And we will operate the machine with our remote. So first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and purge the system. Once that's done, we're ready to go ahead and install the static mixer. Now that we have our static mixing nozzle installed, uh, we're going to use uh, quarter inch nylon tubing to connect our mixer directly to our injection ports. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and, and grab a physical sample. Okay, so we're ready to start injecting. Typically you start at the, at the bottom of the crack and work your way up. Um, the idea here is that we wanna fill this crack completely with, with epoxy. So the ideal situation is that as we inject one port, we would witness what we call port-to-port -port travel or port-to-port -port communication, meaning that the product will begin to, to run out of the port above. Uh, this is a sure sign that we're, that we're filling the crack and we're bridging that space between our injection ports. So we're gonna go ahead and start here toward the bottom We'll snap on our valve, we'll open it up, and then we're going to go ahead and trigger the pump. What we're looking for is we're looking for epoxy to start flowing from this upper injection port. Once we see that, we'll go ahead and close the valve. We'll attach a valve to the next port and cap off the port we were working on. Open the valve, go ahead and cap off the port we're working on. Trigger the pump. The injection is done now and the crack has been repaired. The next step in the process is to remove the injection ports and grind down the surface seal. So we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate that on this crack uh, that we injected earlier today. Okay, the, the ports have been removed, the surface has been, been ground down, it's nice and smooth, ready to receive some paint. Okay, the injection is done now. Uh, we witnessed port-to-port -port communication. We can feel, feel confident that we filled this crack completely. So the last thing is to go ahead and, and shut down our machine, and uh, we're not gonna clean this machine right now because we're gonna, be, we're gonna continue to inject, but we're gonna kinda talk about how this, uh, how this machine is cleaned. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll remove the static mixer. The mixer, the, the nylon tubing, the, the connectors are, um, are essentially one use. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna throw these out. Um, we'll replace those on the, on the next injection. Um, as far as shutting down the machine, we would go ahead and, and pump out the rest of the material. Um, we would then uh, Put about a, a, a pint or so of, of solvent, uh, xylene is probably the best on each side, and we would go ahead and, and trigger our, our pump and run those solvents through our lines. The, the best way to keep this pump working, working well is to open and close the valve and allow the pump to build some back pressure in the cleaning process. 
So we'll go ahead and repeat that a few times, uh, build some good back pressure and release it. Um, the last step would be then to run a, uh, a lubricator through it. We use hydraulic oil. Uh, the idea is to go ahead and get all the solvents out of the, out of the machine and replace it with a, a lubricator, something that uh, uh, will condition the seals and, and will kind of create an environment where uh, products cannot become rigid.